oh, God, why in the frick does that keep happening? What I would seriously work on is just trying to keep your head and chest down. Yeah, that's the ticket. Just keep that head and chest down and you should be in the business here. Let's try again. I mean, that was a little better that time, but you're still got the head and the chest coming up. So for years, a lot of us golf instructors have spent a lot of time studying what the best players in the world are doing, both in the modern era and from many, many years ago or many moons ago, right? And we've been able to look at the golf swing very closely and see that there is nobody that really swings the golf club exactly the same way. In fact, you'd be very hard pressed to find two people that look exactly the same way at every single position that produce the exact same ball flight. Now, what does that mean to you though? Well, that means that you don't have to be perfect when it comes to some of the positions that you hear us talk about so much. But I know that it's a very common mistake when it comes to playing this crazy game we call golf that people run into early extension. People have a hard time staying down in the golf ball. And this, my friends at home, stems from two very, very common mistakes. Number one is going to be a setup mistake. So I'm gonna be talking to you about what those setup mistakes really are. We're gonna go through those things really quickly. But most importantly, the other problem that really exists in the golf swing and why this happens is because of where your force of movement comes from. The golf swing is full of steepening and shallowing moves. You have many different options to be able to move the club in space. And a lot of you at home swing the golf club primarily from your smallest muscles, your hands and your arms and your shoulders. And you start the processes of steepening the golf club up very quickly. And as a result of it, you start moving into extension to help shallow things back out. This right here is not something that we're gonna fix by focusing on what your hands and your arms are doing in space. You need a good kick in the butt and to be able to use your legs and your hips properly in your golf swing. You need to feel aggressive through your legs and hips. And so today, we're gonna to be focusing on exactly a simple little drill that you can set up on the driving range or in the comforts of your own home that's gonna more or less give you the visual that you need to have when you're standing over the golf ball so that you know where the weight is supposed to be moving through your feet and you have a visual that you can see from your perspective to know if your hips are coming forward. So hopefully you're excited because I'm excited. Now let's get to work. A lot of us at home will use what we call the tush line. This is a line that's gonna come down straight off the back of the tush straight down to the ground. And when we move our body through into impact, what you're gonna see is that the tush stays back against that line for all of the frames into contact and even post impact. Now you will see some players, much like Victor Hovland, you'll see his tush back through the line ever so slightly at the point of contact. You'll see players like Brant Snedeker and uh, even Scotty Schuffer where they're a little bit forward off of that line. Very small amounts, not enough to where it's going to cause them ball striking chaos. The reason why this causes a lot of chaos is, is because when your spine starts to move vertical, okay, then what's happening is, is you can see that it's starting to change and the swing plane is starting to react. Also what's happening is, is that that's starting to move the low point in the swing around and that's forcing your hands to become really active and trying to save the mix. Now, the reason why you see little subtle variations with players like a Victor Hovland versus a Rory McIlroy versus a Scotty Scheffler is because their release patterns are very different. If you look at Victor Hovland's release pattern, who's openly said that he doesn't have a very high rate of closure in the club face, and you look at his hands after impact, you can see that he doesn't have a lot of wrist and forearm rotation or a lot of supination, much like you would see of a Lucas Glover or a Rory McIlroy, where if you look at Justin Thomas, he's more like what you would see of Victor Hovland. Now, if you think about the shot shape that both Justin and Victor wanna use or wanna hit, they're working to try to hit a little bit of a fade, right? Victor hits a pretty good size fade. And so what he does in his golf swing is he comes down and he's, yes, he's increased spine angle a little bit, and he's in this position that looks really crowded and he holds off on some of the rotation of the face through his wrists and forearms, and he turns his body quite a bit through the point of contact actively to help be the other mechanism that's helping square the face. If he doesn't have these two things well balanced, then his golf ball is going way off the planet towards right field. Now, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to fix this stuff with a simple little box drill that you can set up and that you're gonna be amazed on how you can actually start to fix extension by feeling the pressure through your feet and how to use your trail foot and your lead hip as a engine to your golf swing. Now, how I have this set up is I've got two alignment sticks on the ground. These alignment sticks are gonna be positioned in a way where the front stick is going to be directly underneath the ball of my foot, okay? On both feet here. The back line is sitting 
directly in behind my ankle joint here. So directly in behind my ankle bone. Now, as you look at this on the ground here, you can see that I've created this sort of rectangle, right? This rectangle in here, inside of it is gonna be considered our go zone. Anything outside of this rectangle in front of it or behind it is going to be considered our no-go zones or our danger zones. Now, before I start making golf swings here, I'm gonna remove the alignment sticks from the mix here because I don't wanna be standing on alignment sticks. It's make, it makes it harder for you to actually be able to feel the ground and be able to use the ground like you would see of a playing professional. So what I do is I just put them down there as reference points. I grab some Dr. Scholl's foot spray and then I just start spraying the lines on the ground. Okay, then I'll take these sticks out of there and you can even make the visual a little bit tighter for yourself by boxing it in. And now you are set up to go through the drill. All right, so what I've done to enhance the, the visual process for you at home is I've basically just taken the box that we've drawn on the ground here and I've put in four tees on each of the corners so that we have a ball that represents where the box really is so you can see it. You can set this up the same way if you want. Now, one of the things that I wanna cover before we start going into the movement part of the drill is I wanna make sure that your setup position is not working against you. A lot of times what amateur golfers will tend to do is they try to fight off early or moving up and out of the shot from their address position. And what this looks like is, is typically you're gonna get way more knee flex and kinda of get your hips sunk, sunk up underneath you and you're gonna start sitting down into the quads. We want at a good address position, we want the back of the knee to be directly over the center of the ankle. Okay, you don't want knee flex like this. This is gonna, like I said, it's gonna start stretching out these muscles in the quads. These muscles will fatigue very quickly and you'll start firing up and out of posture. The other fatal mistake that I see a lot of amateur golfers make is that they start to hinge way more from their hips, getting their butt way too far back where their butt's way back in behind the heels. And now you get yourself in a position where your upper half is leaned over the golf ball and your brain is very good about two things on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to you and your golf game. It wants to keep you in balance the entire time and it likes to make some subconscious decisions that you may not like when you're in full swing format. So those two things in mind, what we wanna remember is, is that at your address position, you only need to hinge enough just to get your booty back in behind your heels just a fraction. So you wanna push your pelvis down and back, let your chest fall over the golf ball and just soften your knees. And you wanna make sure, like I said, the back of the knee is over the center of the ankle, and you wanna feel a bulk of your pressure sitting right in the middle of the go zone on both sides, both your trail foot and your lead foot. If you are set up like this, then you're set up for success, and now you're ready to start the movement portion of today's drill. Okay, so what I like to do here before I start using the golf club and start trying to ramp up the speed is, I first like to kinda of understand how the pressure is gonna move through my feet during the entire golf swing. And so what I want you to remember here is that when you get into your setup position and you've got that front line directly underneath the ball of your foot and you've got this back line directly in behind your ankle joints, the weight shift is gonna work kind of like a figure eight. When I start to turn my body into my trail side, the bulk of my pressure is now going to go to the extreme trail side of the go zone. It's not gonna get back outside of it where I can see my toes up off the ground, but you're gonna see that it sinks back in into that backward part of the rectangle that we have on the ground. What you're gonna notice from the lead foot is because my hips are rotating and this weight is coming off of the lead side is that the weight is starting to move to the forward part of the foot. Again, not getting into the danger part of the swing where you have your weight all the way up onto your toes or lifting your heel up off the ground like you would see from some of the older style golf instruction. That's what they used to use to help get the weight onto the trail side and to help create a lot of excess movement that we don't really need to have. Now. Once we get into that loaded position, the way the weight's gonna work is as we start to move off of this trail side, again, we wanna keep the weight from going into the no-go zone. So we're gonna be working on getting our weight to transfer and start to move into the backside of the lead foot underneath the go zone. Now, how we do this is I like to use our feet and our hips as kind of like a, a starter to our engine. And I like to use a more or less active movement from the lead hip and the lead leg to help counterbalance that. So when you turn your body into your trail side, what you're gonna do here with this trail foot is you're gonna start to roll to the inner portion of your trail foot. You're just gonna start to roll onto the inner portion of your sole here. Okay, now when you do that, if you look at my pelvis, 
it's moving a lot in a horizontal fashion, right? Now, obviously in the golf swing, there's horizontal movement, there's rotational movement, and there's also vertical movement. So what we're gonna do here to counterbalance this movement is when we start to roll to the inner portion of the trail foot, is we're gonna take this lead hip and this lead butt, and we're gonna pull it back and away from where the golf ball is. So you're gonna roll to the inner portion of your trail foot, and you're gonna pull that butt back like it's going into a wall. This right here is going to be the position that you're gonna be trying to work into and through. Now how I like to do this is I like to take my setup position. I like to imagine I'm holding the club. I like to cross my arms over my shoulders and I like to make a little pressure shift onto my trail side. So I'm gonna push my weight down into that trail part of the, uh, the go zone here and I'm gonna turn my body and I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have the weight going outside on my lead foot. I'm gonna make sure that I feel a lot of pressure underneath this, this trail leg here. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to roll to the inner portion of the foot and I'm gonna take that lead hip and pull it back and away, and I'm gonna stop at impact. And I'm gonna make sure that I feel balanced and stable in this position. I feel like I'm in a position where I could let the hands and arms go flying past me, and I could produce a lot of club head speed and not have to worry about getting pulled all over the place. What I want you to be able to do, the goal is, before you start picking the golf club up, let's wait for the helicopter to go by. Your goal, before you start picking the club up and making some swings here, is to be able to move in fluidity. but I want you to start at a speed that you feel comfortable with. So you're gonna start out at kind of a snail's pace. So you wanna think about a little pressure shift, turn, roll off of that trail foot, counterbalance it by pulling the lead hip back and away and stop. Once you get to a point where you can do this at close to your golf course speed, then I want you to pick the club back up and I want you to do the exact same thing. I don't want you to hit a golf ball I just want you to go ahead and take your setup and you're gonna be making golf swings now. Yes, your hands and your arms are gonna be moving, your body's gonna be turning, but I want you to try to be as perfect with what you just felt with your lower half. I want you to be connected to that. Connected to where you're feeling the weight move through your feet the entire time and I just want you to make some good moderate speed swings. So it's gonna look like this. Okay, so you can see that as my hand started to pass in front there, that the weight started to swivel up onto the toe and I started to go into the no-go zone long after impact. That's totally fine. That's exactly what's going to happen. It happens long after impact, okay? So remember, I'm gonna feel the pressure towards that trail side of the no-go zone. I'm gonna use that pressure to move to the inner portion of the trail foot and I'm gonna pull that left booty back and away and I'm gonna do it in fluidity. Okay. So each one of those swings, you can see that my hips are starting to stay back. I don't have my hips chasing forward. There's a lot of space for my hands and arms to pass in front. That right there is exactly what you would see from some of the best players. Now, when you're ready to start hitting golf balls, the same thing applies here. I like for you to work on ratios of these things. I like for you to go and build a practice program that's gonna work for you. Those reps that you do with your arms across your shoulders are to create awareness of the movement, create focus. Use the visuals that we've got down here on the ground to your favor. Then pick up the pace, bring the golf club back in, start finding the pace that you know that you can do these movements and be comfortable with them, and then gradually bring the golf ball back in the mix. It's very important that you challenge the subconscious to do this when the golf ball is present. You need to start feeding your brain so that you can get this stuff ready for the golf course. You got it? Okay, good. Let's walk through this exactly how I would practice this. I'm gonna set my club off to the side here. I'm gonna get myself set up on the lines. I'm gonna get myself in a good setup position. I've got my knees, the back of my knee directly over the center of my ankle. Imagine I'm holding a club, cross my arms over my shoulders, little pressure shift, move off of the trail foot, pull the lead hip back and away. Okay, another reference point that you can use if it's good for your visual process is not letting the belt buckle go into the forward part of the no-go zone. Okay, once you start getting some fluidity, then you can bring the club back in 
and you can start making some swings here. Remember, take your time and get yourself set up properly. Okay, be aware of the go zone and be aware of the no-go zones. And remember how to use the trail foot and the lead leg and lead hip. Okay. Once you do a couple reps that you like, bring the golf ball back in and hit a shot. Stay committed to the movements. Don't worry about the strike at first. Okay, be committed to the movements, trying your best to be able to recreate that and let the golf ball and the golf club speak for themselves. Repeat the process. Okay. 